This question was the last one in the exam paper. Uh, it's worth seven marks. And I think that if you can actually visualise what you're trying to do um, and you can get started in the right way, you should be able to get all the marks on this question. It's a really, really nice question to have. The first thing we need to do with a question like this is to draw a sketch so we can get some idea of what this would look like. Now, I'm not going to draw a set of axes. I'm going to use like invisible axes, you could say. Um, but I'm going to plot point A and point B. I'm going to put A down here. So A is minus 6, 2. And B is 5, 3. So it's to the right and just a little bit up from A. So that's going to be my point B. Here's 5, 3. And they are joined by a straight line. And that straight line is called L. And we have the straight line M, which is perpendicular to L, passing through the midpoint. So I'm going to need to mark on the midpoint of my line, which is going to be here, such that this length is the same as this length. And then I'm going to draw my line um, M. It's perpendicular to L. So that's my line M. Do that in green. And it says that M intersects with the line X equals minus 1 at point C, but where would that line be? I haven't got any axes drawn, so where would it be? Well, I know that x equals minus 1 is a vertical line, and I know it is just to the left of the um, the y-axis. So if we look at the points I've plotted here, my x-coordinate here is 5, my x-coordinate here is minus 6, so my line, x equals minus 1, is going to be just to the left-hand side of where this midpoint is. It's going to be just a little bit closer to A than to B. I'm going to exaggerate it slightly, so I'm going to draw on a line here and call this line um, x equals minus 1. And then it crosses here, it intersects, and that's point C. So I know a little bit of the coordinates of that point already. I know my x coordinate is minus 1, but I don't know what my uh, y coordinate is, so I'm just going to call it little y. Um, do I have everything on my diagram? Probably worth marking on the 90 degree, like this. And it tells me that overall, the question, I need to work out, calculate the area of triangle A, B, C. So that's this triangle here. Now, obviously to work out the area of a triangle, maybe I can draw that one in, in yellow, I'm not sure it'll show up, but let's try it. Oh, that's not too bad. So the area of this triangle here. Now the area of a triangle, as you know, is base times height divided by 2. So clearly I'm going to need to know the length of AB and then the height C to the midpoint here and then I'll be able to solve my problem, work out the area. So let's start with the first part of that which is length of AB. Now AB, if we look at it here we have a, we could form a right angled triangle. And we can use Pythagoras to actually work out the um, length of AB. So this bottom right-hand corner, the 90 degree here, um, the coordinates of that would be the x value from B and the y value from A. So that will be 0.52. The height of my um, triangle here will just be the difference in the y values, these two y values here. 3 take away 1, uh, sorry, 3 take away 2. So that's got a height of 1. The base here, this length here, will be the change in my x values, minus 6 and 5. The difference between those is 11. And now I can work out my um, length AB. So AB will be the square root of 1 squared plus 11 squared, which is the root of uh, 122. So I know the length of AB. I can use that now, ultimately, when I'm working out the area of my triangle. Next, I want to work out the midpoint of AB, the coordinates for the midpoint. I'm going to call that N, okay? So I'm going to say let N equal the midpoint of AB. And the midpoint is just basically, it's, it's going to be, it's halfway between A and B. So it's halfway between the X values and halfway between the Y values. Or another way of saying is what's the average of the X values and the average of the Y values. So the midpoint of AB will be equal to 
5 plus minus 6 divided by 2. Those are my x values. And 3 plus 2 divided by 2. Those are my y values. So 5 plus minus 6 is going to give me minus 1. So it's minus 1 over 2. And I'm going to have 3 plus 2, which is 5 over 2. You may prefer to see that in decimal form. That is minus 0 0.5 and 2.5. Probably nicer to put it in that format. So that's the coordinates for the midpoint, my point N. Next, I want to work out the gradient of AB. Now, the gradient is, as you should know, is the rise over the run, or change in Y over change in X, depends how you would like to phrase it. So basically, what we look at here is the gradient is going to be the change in the um, y value, so that's going to be 3 minus 2 over the change in the x value, which is 5 minus minus 6, and this equals 1 over 5 minus minus 6 is 5 plus 6, so it's 1 over 11. So the gradient of line AB is 1 over 11. Now, once you have the gradient of one perpendicular line, you know the gradient of the other. You should know that the gradient, for example, here of M is equal to the negative reciprocal of the gradient of our line AB or L, depends which, which way you want to call it. So we know the gradient of line L is equal to 1 over 11. So our gradient of M is minus 1 over 1 over 11, which is just equal to negative 11. So the gradient of, of our line M is, my, is negative 11. So focusing now on line M, we know uh, the gradient is equal to minus 11. Line M. And we know it goes through uh, the point zip minus 0 0.5 and 2.5. That's the midpoint of our line AB. So once we know the gradient and we, want, we know one of the points, we can work out the equation of the line using y equals mx plus c. We know that uh, our y value for two point is 2.5, our gradient is minus 11, our x value is n minus 0 0.5, and we just need to find out c. So what we have here is 2.5, and then we have 5.5 um, plus c. So c is equal to negative 3, so our equation is y equals minus 11x minus 3. Just to recap, you take the pair of coordinates that you know, put the y value in, x value in, the gradient is our m, and then you just solve the equation for c and re-substitute it back into our equation along with our value for m. That's the equation of our line, um, which is our line m. Next, we're going to work out the coordinates for point c. So at point C, we know we have minus 1 and y. We need to know what y is, but we know the equation, which is which is y equals minus 11x minus 3. So we can put our x value into that equation. So we say, what is our y value when we have minus 11 multiplied by our x value, which is minus 1, subtract 3? Minus 11 times minus 1 is 11. 11 take away 3 is equal to 8. So when x is minus 1, y is equal to um, 8. So point C is going to be minus 1, 8. At this point, we want to work out the height of our triangle. So the distance between C and N. C, as we now know, is minus 1, 8. And point N, we discovered, was minus 0 0.5, 2.5. So we just want to find the length of that. And it's similar to finding the length of AB. We're going to use Pythagoras. So let's just draw the little diagram here a little bit clearer. Let's see. There's N. We have minus 1, 8. Uh, we have minus 0 0.5, 2.5. And we want to form a little triangle here. So what's our distance here, well that's going to be our change in our x value, 
So that's going to be from minus 1 to minus 0 0.5, which is 0 0.5. And then our height is going to go from 2.5 up to 8, so that's going to be 5.5. So our length here, Cn, is going to be the square root of 0 0.5 squared plus 5.5 squared, which looks pretty scary. Um, I'm putting that into a calculator, we get the square root of 30.5. And that's the length from C to N. Finally, we get to the point where we can calculate the area of our triangle. So the area of the triangle is equal to half multiplied by the length of the base, which was AB. So half of AB multiplied by the height, which we said was CN. So that's a half multiplied by AB was the root of 122. CN was the root of 30.5. And when you put that into a calculator, you get the answer of 30.5. Uh, there are no units there because we didn't use any measurements at all. So you could write square units or you could just leave it as 30.5. Now, it does look like a very, very difficult question. But if you go back through the video again, just look at it step by step. We've done multiple different tasks. All of them individually are not complicated. It's just the fact that they're all wrapped up in one big question. If you can understand all of the different skills here, they could come up in individual questions or they could be thrown together like this. Do practice these. These are really good questions to get because you can quite easily I think, get the whole seven marks on something like this if you've practiced.